Welcome back, everyone. I hope you all had a great lunch and had some nice talks over the lunch break. We will continue the second half of the day. The first half was already very, very nice. I really enjoyed seeing all of you and also the, the different talks. I think it was quite a success already. Uh, this afternoon, will, uh, Boston will actually join us. So hi to Boston and hi to uh, Barcelona again. So now actually all three on-site conferences are running. And this is why our CTO, Mr. Uh, Ansgar Krivet, will uh, welcome everyone with a short keynote about the significance of software and also AI over the years in the Festo product portfolio. So I'm really looking forward. He managed to be here on site, so that's really great. I'm thankful for that. And afterwards, we will also see the other conferences. So one look into the conferences in um, Barcelona and in Boston. So without further ado, Mr. Kirvit, thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, all of you. Good morning, colleagues in, in Boston. Glad that you could join us. Um, uh, Jan told me that uh, right after lunch, everybody is full and uh, you're, going to, you're going right into digestion mode. So we need something sparkling and I will try to do my very best uh, to sparkle. My name is Enska Krivet. I'm responsible for uh, research and development at Festo. Um, now you might ask for how long, actually not so long. Uh, I'm with Festo now for 28 years. First 14 years were in research and development, then I spent the last 14 years in sales and now since uh, about nine months or so, I'm back in research and development and I have the, the pleasure uh, to lead this organization and I would like to talk to you a little bit about uh, what is the significance of automation in general and of software and artificial intelligence for our business at Festo and we believe also for humanity. And, uh, but first, let's, let's look back how it all started, because it started with very humble beginnings. You see here a picture from our first IA conference in 2019. Some of you, few of you, remember, because it was much, much smaller then, uh, but it developed greatly. And already last year, in 2022, you, see, you can see we had more than 200 participants. We had already three streams, um, and we have grown massively. And now, this year, uh, we are actually with more than 500 visitors. We are at three locations and a great agenda that, uh, that all of you know and some of you have already participated in the morning. So I'm, I'm really proud to see that development and proud to see how this also reflects the importance of software development, artificial in intelligence and also the related work environment um, that, that has some relation to that. Uh, how that affects us at Festo and how that also drives our business. And this is what I would like to, to talk a little bit about. You know, I'm an I'm a engineer. And as an engineer, I fundamentally think that problems of humanity have engineering solutions. And now you might smile and say, well, that is actually much too simplified. But I'm, I'm really convinced, if you look at what are the big challenges of humanity today. I mean, we talk about a change of population. We have an increasing population. In the developed societies, we have an aging population. People grow older, in average, and they need more support in their work life. At the same time, we have a growing divide between the global north and the global south. So we have an equality problem um, that, that requires solutions. And then, on the, on the lower side, you see we also have, of course, a lot of ecolo ecological challenges. Think of the climate, think of uh, the, the waste challenges that we have, recycling requirements. So we have a lot of fundamental requirements, fundamental issues as societies and as humanity where I believe engineering solutions can go a long way in order to improve. And that brings me to the point that um, Festo, of course, as an automation company, that is active in moving parts in all kinds of industri industrial production machines, we can contribute to that. And that we see also as our mission, that we see as our contribution. And this is where we want to develop further. And artificial intelligence, software, software-defined products play a crucial role in that. And you might think, okay, why is that so? Why is suddenly 
intelligence, sensor, communication, software, artificial intelligence, why is that suddenly getting so much more important? And I believe the fundamental reason for that is actually Moore's Law. You're all familiar with Moore's Law, and you see here a nice, uh, nice chart in the back that shows that if we compare ourselves to the 1970s, uh, the, the cost for an operation per second has come down by the factor 10 to the power of 13. And what does that mean? That means that in the past, mechanical uh, solutions were cheap and the electronics around the mechanical solution were expensive. And today it's the other way around. Right? Today, sensors, communication, control technology, processing power, memory has become ridiculously cheap and is therefore added in large extent to all kinds of automation equipment. And that is a trend that we saw first and we continue to see in the consumer industry. Remember, 50 years ago, the only electrical part of your car was the radio. Right? Then came more and more support systems for your car and today we are actually we are, we are driving a computer that also happens to bring you from A to B. But it is actually much more defined by the software and controls part than by the engine, suspension system and, and all that. So we have really seen a change from a mechanical device to a software defined product. Now you might say cars, okay, it's a special thing, but we see that everywhere. Look at watches, right? Purely mechanical watches, then came the first quartz watches, which much more precision. And today, most of us have a, basically a, a health control unit that also happens to show you the time. Uh, but, but this is not the primary reason, right? Um, let's look into the kitchen. If we look at kitchen devices, right, it started all mechanic, then came the electrical motor to support. Today, we talk about a fully integrated uh, cooking device with recipe management and everything. And why? Because if you look from here to there, the cost of sensors, communication, memory, processing power has become ridiculously cheap and will continue to do so in the future. And they will continue to drive this trend further. And this trend that we have seen in the consumer world already for many years is now also taking a uh, taking hold in the industrial world, in the investment goods. And we can see that. You can see that in the servo motors, for example, we now have uh, extensive supervision systems. Even in things as simple as, as, as uh, um, bearings, we have vibration control uh, possibilities, that is measuring the noise and uh, doing Fourier transformation in order to understand what is the, the health of the, of the gear, what is the health of the machine, what is the health of the bearing attached. So we see that even on a small, simple, cheap mechanical device, more and more electronics and control is added to increase functionality. And our mission at Festo is to bring that into pneumatics. So we want to be the pioneers in bringing that intelligence and that enhancement of functionality around mechanical devices into the pneumatic world. And we did a first step about five years ago with the development of what we call the motion terminal. And that goes back to the, to the simple uh, question of how do you get rid of most of the ex equipment that is today used to control the pneumatic circuit? Flow controls, proportional valves, different valve functions. And how can you integrate that into one device that is then software defined that where you can program the functionality through software, although it's a mechanical hardware device. So the electrical guys amongst you might think of it as a mechanical clone of an FPGA. So programmable hardware, but in the mechanical world. That is what we have created. Giving us a lot of flexibility and also functionality that has never before happened. And possible only through control, Software, memory, getting ridiculously cheap. 
And many more opportunities are there in this area. I'll give you uh, two, two more examples. If we talk about pneumatics, what we typically have is we have an actuator, like a cylinder. It can also be a gripper that is gripping something or a turning device. Honestly saying, this is the only thing the customer pays for. Right? The only thing he wants is he wants to move something. Unfortunately, in order to have this thing working, we also need a valve that switches the air on and off. And unfortunately, in order to control that, we also need a controller to tell the valve when to switch on and off. But actually, the only thing the customer pays for is that. Now, this is not only a cylinder, but in order to tell the control when the motion is complete, we always have these cylinder switches attached. So small sensors that detect the motion of the cylinder and tell the PLC or the IPC motion is complete. Now these cylinder switches are the biggest nuisance for our customers. Because they are electronic devices, they have cables attached, they are right in the front, buried somewhere in the machine, the cables are breaking all the time, you have got service costs, it's, it's, a, it's a big mess. Now we have asked ourselves, how can we get rid of the cylinder switches. How can we avoid the cylinder switches? And we can, because what happens is we have a mechanical movement, and a mechanical movement always creates a sound. And there's a characteristical sound profile that happens when the cylinder touches the front end or touches the back end. And by analyzing this sound profile, we can detect motion complete even without having a cylinder switch. Now, you might say, okay, but then we need a microphone and, and, and so on. Yes, but actually, if you think about it, a microphone and a pressure sensor are actually the same thing. Right? It's a device to uh, transform changes in pressure into an electrical signal. So why not use the pressure sensors that we already have as a microphone in order to detect these signals? Of course, in order to do that, you need some intelligence, right? You need actually artificial intelligence to, to do this interpretation and that selection to be sure that this operates also under various operating conditions. But it brings huge benefit for the customer because he no longer has the stupid cylinder switches no more costs for exchanging cables, uh, no more service, no more breakdown, uh, uh, lack of availability of the machine and all that. So great opportunity that comes to us through the availability of cost-effective cylinder control and uh, artificial intelligence connected to that. One nice example, second example, energy cost. We all know that pneumatic is an expensive form of energy, so we have to be very careful in using it. Now, are we very careful today? I would say no, because typically what we do is, once we open the valve, air flows to the cylinder, and we fill the cylinder to the top with maximum pressure, although we might need maybe half of it. So we are wasting 50% of the energy. What would be the solution? Well, the solution would be to find exactly the point in time when to switch off the cylinder. Today, what we are doing is we are opening the valve, air flows into the cylinder, the cylinder is extracting, and only when the cylinder is fully complete, the cylinder switch, or in future the acoustic monitoring, will tell us, okay, motion is complete. Now, it would be great if we could switch off maybe at the half of the way, because the air that is then already in the cylinder, once it expands, would create a complete motion. And this is exactly what we call smart switching. So, understanding when to switch off the valve in order to be sure that the cylinder is fully expanding to its end position and at the end position has sufficient force in order to fulfill its operation. And then you can see what we would do is we would save about half of the energy, it always depends on the application, can be more, can be less, depending on the individual application. But great opportunity to reduce energy consumption through intelligence, some control, and some software functionality, artificial intelligence. So there is, as you can see from these examples, there is great opportunity out there. And I believe that we can do in the industrial world the same trick that the colleagues in the consumer world have already shown us. And that is to exchange 
numerous single purpose hardware, dictaphone, hearing, uh, uh, iPod, flash lamp, and, and, and all that, single purpose hardware to exchange that with a multi purpose hardware which is defined by software functionality. That is ultimately what we are doing. Creating multi-purpose hardware together with software that is creating the wealth of possibilities that we have pre previously needed. Much more resources, much more energy, much more material, and created much more ecological problems. That is our mission. And thank you all for being here and for supporting us. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you.